Welcome to Dr. Amazon Podcast, the emergency support channel for FBA private label sellers. We invite top Amazon experts to share the most efficient tips and tricks for your businesses. We are trying to deliver only accurate, credible, and relevant information. My name is Vitaly Fizhniak and I am the CGO of Profit Vale. And let's get started. Welcome. Today we have a one of the crazy guests in the case of like the Amazon and uh, the all this here. Today we will speak more about the brand, how to work with the new products, how to do the brand on the Amazon, because it's like one of the main important topics for right now. And thank you so much, Sis, for joining us today. I guess it will be a crucial podcast for today. And uh, we have the CEO at uh, Just One Diamond. So please welcome, Sis. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me be on here, Vitaly. And I want to mention a lot of people ask, well, why you mentioned CEO of Just One Dime. A lot of people ask, well, why do you call it that? And I just want to start by saying, whoever's listening to this podcast right now, if you have just a tiny bit of money, maybe you're broke, maybe your marriage is in trouble, maybe you're struggling with your identity, maybe you're tired of your nine to five and you really want to break out of that, you can start right now. You don't have to have $100,000 to start. You don't have to have amazing business experience to start. You don't have to have all those things. What you need is a willingness to begin and move to action. And the reason, Vitaly, many people told us, they said, Seth, why don't you change the name? It sounds like some kind of charity or nonprofit or 501c3 corporation. And I said, I'll tell you why. Because I never want to forget that we started with a single dime. That's it. We were broke, just a dime. And I knew someday in my heart that I would be able to tell other people, you can start with just 10 cents as well. If you have the right mindset and you choose to act and you're willing to mess up along the way, there's nothing holding you back except you. And I want that to give people hope. Exactly. Thess, I'm fair enough about it and I really can relate on it. And today it's really one of the most important topics for the most of the Amazon sellers. Today we will yeah. have a chance to go deeper, you know, in a case of how to work exactly with the Amazon in a case mm -hmm. your brand. Because right. when you start, you should differentiate yourself. So let's speak about it. Could you please share with us your experience, yeah? And your ideas like on 2020, yes. how you could do it, how you could do it correctly. Yes, absolutely. So I personally made over 5 million in the last 12 months selling on Amazon. That's revenue. And from that revenue, depending on the product, it's between 40 and 60% profit margin. That's me personally for stores that I run. Additionally, for stores we build for other people or for business partners, we manage over a hundred million in Amazon revenue. So what I share with everyone listening today, let me just start by this. This is not some pipe dream. This is not some you know stupid promise that, oh, it's just three steps and it's easy. It's none of that. I will tell you exactly how to build a new product, how to design one, and how to build a brand around that. And I will tell you that from my personal experience. This is not something I read in a book. This is not some from course. This is something I and my team have had to do and we have learned by making many mistakes along the way. I could go on and share more credibility, but I just want everyone who's listening, what we share today, it works because we live it. We know what it's like and it is not easy, but it is very fun and very fulfilling. I guess it will be like fantastic because you will share your own experience. You test it a lot and you know what is working good or not because we have the same picture in a case of what is really working for like in the case of the BBC and all this stuff. So Sis, just welcome. And I would be glad if you will start in a case of like the brand, yeah? How to build it. What Absolutely. could we do? And let's start this story. Perfect, you got it. So the first thing you want to do when building a brand is you need to find a problem. What is a problem people are struggling with? Everything people buy is for one of two reasons, either to increase pleasure or to decrease pain. So you need to find a product that either adds pleasure or removes pain. I mean, if you think about it, even on a philosophical religious worldview level, people still ultimately do it because they are looking for satisfaction or they're trying to remove regret and pain. So the first question is simple, and this is the premise of every successful entrepreneur. What problem are you solving? 
Well, okay, Seth, I'm ready. How do I solve a problem? Well, you have to go find the problem. So you that you begin by jumping into Facebook groups. You go onto Pinterest. You go onto Etsy. You start searching on Amazon using research tools, and you find a problem in the world that people do not know how to solve. And I'll give an example, a very practical example. So one of our most effective products that we launched was a gun that shoots money. This is the first product that brought us to over 20,000 a month. It's called a cash cannon or an e-cannon or a money gun. This particular product solves a problem. How? Well, people, when they're at parties, they wanted to have fun and they like money flying everywhere. So you put a bunch of dollars into the money, you pull the trigger and boom, it's going everywhere all over at the party. So this is an example where people are like, they're trying to increase the pleasure of the party. That's an example of a product. And here's what's interesting. Even though no one, no one at all had ever sold this product on Amazon before yet, we were the first. What is interesting is, you know, people like parties, you know, people like money and you know, they like things that are innovative. So we pulled from the fact that people love entertainment, the party, they love money, the shooting, the gun that shoots the, the money and something that is innovative or novel. And by putting those two together, this product did extremely well. And that's just one very simple example. So the first thing is you find a problem to solve or a way to increase pleasure. And again, you can go online, you can talk to neighbors, you just start developing a sense of what are people looking for. It's funny, you can have two different people go into a bathroom, sit on the toilet to use the restroom. And one of them says, wow, this toilet paper holder is terrible. And they get upset. And the other person looks at it and says, hmm, I bet I could create a better one. In other words, the way they look at the world is through how to solve problems. So that is the first step, Vitelli. That is amazing because you find the problem and you find the triggers that helps you to go into your audience just to catch them, that just to provide them with the right product. Because yes. we also uh, provide with such like ideas, uh, our audience in the case of that, you could go and search the reviews, like the, not like a top five reviews or like with a one star review, but when the people have like two or three or four stars, it's also a really great uh, ideas for you how to improve your product. If you will go into this niche, for example, if you have like, if it's not a new like niche or product for the Amazon, yeah, like generally, but right. if, if you just start to compete. Yeah, so exactly. absolutely, I can relate on it. So let's go further and uh, what is like the second one? The second step, once you know the problem, is you need to understand the problem on an intimate level. It's not enough just to say, oh, I read a bunch of critical reviews and all the people are complaining, I need a better gun that shoots money, or I need a better yoga mat that doesn't bend when I pull with a, a pull string on it. You actually need to understand them. So how do you do that? You buy products as similar as possible to the product you're going to develop. Now, sometimes you might have a product already exists or someone else has a product that exists and all you're going to do is improve on it. And other times you're creating a whole new product. But remember, people don't change very much when it comes to what they love and hate. I mean, back all the way to the days of the cavemen, people were drawing pictures on walls. Then they were writing in papyrus. Then they were starting to write on paper. Then they started, they came up with photography and film. Then they have Instagram, they have all these things. So, but if you think about it over thousands of years, people still love sharing pictures and drawing pictures. You see what I mean? It's just different ways to do it. So you wanna buy products that are as similar as possible to the products you're gonna develop. And you wanna buy them from the top competitors. For example, if you were coming out with a new computer, you would probably buy Dell, you would probably buy Mac, you would go out and find what are the most popular computers out there. If it was a gaming computer, EJ, what's the gaming computer, the famous one? What's it called? I forget it, it it'll, it'll come back to my mind. But you find the very best. You buy them and you use them. Now you're starting to understand your customer and you want to think about this. What is the, yeah? Razor? Razor? Yes, Razor. Thank you. It's Razor computers. So, and this is such a good example, guys. If you were developing a new computer, you wouldn't just buy a computer. You would say, well, what kind of computer? Is it for someone working from their laptop from a coffee shop? Is it for someone in, next to a huge server room like Dell, which is nearby here in Round Rock, where I live in Austin, Texas? Is it for gaming? You want to be as specific as you can start to use those products and immediately start writing down questions. What do I love? What do I hate? What works? What does not work? What will make mine better? 
in other words, you don't want to build your entire brand off of what the competition you don't like like about the competition. You don't want them, you don't want your identity of your brand to be based on trying to be different than them. But you do need to understand them because here's the value in understanding your competition. Your competition is a window into your customer's experience. The better you understand your competition, the better you can develop a product. So that is step two, Vitaly. The third step is you get a whiteboard or a piece of paper, whatever makes you comfortable, and you begin to physically write, how will my product be different? Now, keep in mind, there are many kinds of differences. Sometimes it could be the actual material of the product. Other times it could be the size of the product. Other times it could be the look of the product. Maybe it's just the design. This is a Jocko mug here. You can see the design is very unique, has a very masculine, manly, uh, these letters are, they, they're indented on the mug and it's kind of a big black mug and it's got like, it has its own design. This could be just a regular coffee mug and all that's really changed is the design of his picture in these words, okay? So you have to decide what is different and you write it down. Some people, Vitaly, they always say this, they say, well, I'm not an artist. I don't care if you're not an artist. It doesn't yeah. matter. You're, you might be doing stick figures on the wall. It's okay. You need to write down and visualize how will mine be different. And the next step is you go buy the pieces that you would need to put together what is called a prototype. This is why we have a 3D printer here in our server at the Just When I'm headquarters in Austin, Texas. When we are developing a new product, Vitaly, we have to first get, in most situations, not all, we have to get a 3D model so we can see how does it feel, how does it look. Now, I'm talking about just one sample. It's obviously not the final product, but it gives me an example. Is it the right size? Does it feel right? If it's a mug, does it feel right when drinking from it? And that gives you an idea. And once you understand the physical components of this product, and let me say one more thing. If you're not using a 3D printer and you don't have one, it doesn't mean you have to have one. Vitaly, I didn't get a 3D printer until many years selling an Amazon. I might have to go to Home Depot and buy a few pieces and parts and put them together that are similar to get a feel. Or I might just write it up and that's all I do. But the next step is where you get a product designer. Now, some people feel like they have to hire this amazing company and they do product design and that's their specialty. I've worked with many product design companies and I can tell you the majority of them are complete crap. What do I mean by that? They have these services and they make money off these services, but they're not actually experts at the products. They're experts at selling the idea. There are a few out there that are good. The easiest way to find a product designer is first, you find a manufacturer. And you find them, not a trading company, a manufacturer. And in our membership with Just One Dime, we teach exactly how to understand the difference between the two. When you find a manufacturer, if they're a good one, they usually have as part of their staff, a product designer. And what you do is you take all your drawings or your prototype or the physical samples that you put together with tape and glue and everything else and ship to them. And you say, here's what I want. What their job is, is now to take your idea and turn it into a 3D model through software. And they design that. And then they send it back to you. And you look at the drawings and you go back and forth and back and forth until it's perfected. And then the next step is they print now a prototype for you. And again, that prototype is simply made out of plastic, out of resin in a 3D printer. So it's not the real product yet. But once you approve that prototype, then you get to the next step where they produce your first real product. Like it literally looks exactly like it's supposed to be. Now, a lot of people say, man, Seth, this sounds complicated. Let me tell you guys, this process is so fun. In fact, for those of you guys who may feel intimidated about all these steps, your first product might be as simple as mine. I simply started selling cremation urns. And because no one else was selling that style, I started making $100 a day, which to me back then was a lot of money. So you might start with something very simple. It's a product no one is selling. And then the next product is you just change the appearance. So you don't need a big model to be created. You don't need a 3D designer. You don't need a prototype. All you need is a coffee mug and you have a different message on it. See what I mean? So there's different levels that you can do this. What's important is that everyone understands you're solving a problem and you're taking all the steps. You are not just a businessman or a businesswoman. You are an inventor. 
And don't think you have to have tiny spectacles and white hair and a cackly laugh and a white coat in order to qualify as an inventor. You as a human being, <coughs> excuse me, have the ability to invent a product. In fact, you're probably encountering problems every day, but you're not yet thinking and realizing, wait, there's a product, there's a product, there's a product. Vitaly, I'll share one more thing and, and then stop. I am amazed at how many times people come to me and they say, Seth, isn't Amazon saturated? No, not even beginning to. The problem is there are more customers looking for products that don't even exist yet. And then people say this, they say, oh, but Seth, aren't there all the product ideas invented in the world? And my answer is, are you joking? There are so many product ideas and needs that I know of right now that I simply don't even have time to work on because we're working on so many as of right now. It's what needs to change is people's perspective. And when you develop the eyes for new products, that's when you can build something amazing. And you will never, ever be in want or in need of a new product idea. All you need to do is change your perspective of the world. Instead of looking at the world as a consumer, begin to look at the world as a producer, as an inventor, as a business person. Yeah, so here's like the main point of uh, do not like stop. If you start working on your product, if you start searching, if you find the ideas how to improve it, just do not stop. Just do not let this uh, idea just gone, you know, and yes. try to continue with all the things that you could find. It doesn't matter how it will be. You don't need like a uh, top technologist as like the 3D producer yes. or something like that. Just do not start and improve it. Find like the factories and here it is. It will be so. Uh, 100%. Amazing points. Yeah, I can relate on it. Uh, so wh what is next after that? What should yeah. we do? Perfect. So let me explain one thing before we move on to the next step. Sometimes a product will need what is called a mold. I don't know how many of you guys are into pirates and ships. And I'm, Every night I read about pirates and they, they use these anchors that drop down from the ship on a rope and they hit the, the ocean bottom and it holds the ship so the ship doesn't drift away. Well, molds are like an anchor. They're these huge hunks of metal. And what happens is they have all these holes called cavities, liquid plastic, and it's liquid because it's heated. This is, I love this process. It's so amazing. It's injected into the mold. And then after it cools, the mold, it spits it out. And there's your product. Not all products need a mold. If your product is so unique and innovative that it needs a mold, and 99% of the time, that means it's going to be some kind of plastic material. And for those of you guys who are environmentally conscious, there are many plastics that are very environmentally respectful. Once you, if a product needs a mold, you will have to pay for the mold. Now, some suppliers, they'll take the mold, let's just say it's $2,000, and they will spread out the cost over the unit. So in other words, if you're going to order 2,000 units, and let's just say for simplicity, the mold costs $2,000, then each unit will cost $1 more and that pays for the mold. In other situations, you don't need a mold, which is totally fine. It might just be a different design. But keep this in mind. The better differentiated or better initiated, like we, like, as we like to say here at Just One Dime, your product is, the more difficult it will be for competitors to compete with you because the more difficult it is for them to copy you. And if you do pay a supplier to build a mold, I highly recommend you sign what is called a NAN agreement, N-A-N, -N. not an NDA. NDA is great for Europeans and Americans. It is not great for Chinese. And an NNN -N -N agreement, sorry, it's an, not an NAN, it's an NNN -N agreement. This agreement is extremely strict and it has all these requirements. In fact, we even use a Chinese lawyer just to make it even easier. You don't have to have one. But what happens is that suppliers agreeing that they cannot use this mold to create the same product for anyone else. And they respect these agreements much more than NDAs. In their world, an NDA means nothing. All it means is you won't share the idea. NDAs are very simple. But this agreement I'm talking about is important. Now, again, that's if you're doing a mold. Once you have the mold, or if you don't need the mold, it's just a different design, like the color or the picture on the product is different, that's when you go into production. Now, a lot of people, Vitaly, a lot of people like to negotiate on the sample. This is a rookie mistake. It looks very unprofessional. You will lose a lot of respect with the supplier, and it's silly. Why would I negotiate on a $100 sample 
and not on a several thousand dollar order. In other words, you want to negotiate on the quantity, not just mm-hmm. one sample. I wouldn't even spend time negotiating on sample. And a really good test to find out if that supplier is a trading company or is an actual supplier is when you order the sample, if they can't send it to you within a week, then they're probably not a real supplier, which means it's a middleman. There's also a lot of other ways we teach how to do that. Once you have the product created and approved, that's when you negotiate the price. And again, they're going to give you an initial quotation. Always ask for less, especially if you're working with Chinese. Always ask for less, at least two times. If you don't ask for less at all, they're not going to respect you. If you're worthy, if you are a worthy business woman or business man, then you're going to ask for a better price. They expect that. A lot of Americans are very sensitive. Oh, I don't want to offend them. No, we kind of live in the land of the free and the home of the, I'm offended. No, you need to negotiate. Negotiate is a part of life. Do not be afraid. Now, if you ask more than twice, if you ask three or four or five times, then a lot of people consider that a lot of Chinese will feel like, okay, you're being a little pushy. So at least ask twice. Once to two is good and, and get the best price you can. And remember, negotiate on quantity. So let's say, for example, you're going to order 400 units. Say, look, I know that 400 units are going to cost me $2 per unit. So that's $800. I would like to order 500 units. Would you give me a 10 cents discount on each product? Now, Vitaly, a lot of Amazon sellers think it's silly. Like the, I, I did when I started, they think, wait, that supplier is only going to give me 10 cents discount or 20 cents discount. That's not very much. Wait a minute. Let's just say in the future, because you will, you're doing 50,000 products. 50,000 times 20 cents is $10,000 savings. You want to negotiate for your future self, not for the sample right now, but your future self. Make business decisions that your future self will thank you for. The best advice I ever received when it comes to business, other than just to move to action and make a lot of mistakes and receive grace, is this. When you make a decision, you're not sure what to do, and you feel, oh, I don't know what to do. And we all experience this every day. Even in our personal life, we experience this. Ask yourself this question. One year from now, what would that Seth say? Five years from now, what would that Seth say? The 80-year-old Seth, what would he say? And all of a sudden, the clouds are gone. And it's like, oh, it makes sense now. So use time to give you wisdom for your actions now. Okay, so Vitaly, back to the final steps. I'll give them to you right now. So after you negotiate, they begin to go into production. Now, there are several ways you can launch your product to build a brand around it. Your product does not just begin with the physical product. That's not the end. It also has to do with the experience the customer has when they buy. So for example, you could choose to launch it on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, crowdfunding. So people can give you immediate feedback based on that video. And now you have an idea if you're headed the right direction. You can do this just with the prototype before you even pay for the production. Now you have all this feedback to know if it's good or not and whether or not it's worth it. Plus, it allows you to have funding. Now, the disadvantage, if you do this, is now the whole world can see your product idea and they might try to copy you. Again, the more differentiated the product is, the harder it is for them to copy you, but just keep that in mind. When you move to launch, understand that if I'm your customer and I buy your product, there are three stages I will go through. Number one, first, I find your listing. I need to fall in love with your listing. Your listing needs to be amazing. Number two, I will experience your product. Your product needs to be better than my expectations. And number three, I need to fall in love with your brand. So when I open the box and I take out the product, if you put a surprise gift in here, maybe if it was a coffee mug, a coaster I did not expect, or a stirring spoon, or maybe you gave me some kind of PDF or ebook that helps me and it's completely free. Now I begin to remember not the listing, because I already forgot about it, not the product, but the brand behind the product. And if you developed an amazing product, even if it took you months to go through this whole process, which I've done so many times now, I promise you this, people will begin to love your product, then they will love your brand, and then your brand will start to take on a life of its own. And as you sell on Amazon or Shopify or Jet or Walmart or your own e-commerce website, People will start to buy it just because it's that brand, just like they do with Nike. Some people, they buy a Nike shoe. They don't even question if the quality is good. They don't even ask. They don't check the heel and the toe. All they care about 
is it the right price? Is it good design? And they'll pay way more for a Nike shoe than other brands. Why? Because Nike shoes are better? Not necessarily. Because Nike has built a trust. How do you build trust? Your first 100 customers, treat them like royalty. And those customers will do more for your brand than you could do with 100 full-time staff employees. So the main idea here uh, is to not like create only the product. Just understand that you create a brand and you, if you will uh, have a chance to create a positive feelings in people that will buy your product, it will be the amazing start. And then you exactly. can launch and work in a case of not like a short term, yeah, a long term. You could have a chance to launch more variations, more products. You could yeah. just expand all your businesses. Like here's exactly. the point. When you start working with the with the product, like the general one, you start working with the marketing. Marketing, how to like create a design, uh, what you should just put inside for creating a some like sur- surprise feeling or something like that. So here's like the main points in a case of how to do it correctly. Like right now, right now the Amazon it's not like for buying or selling products. The Amazon is about like the brands, yeah. And first of all, yeah. on this platform, you should do it. You should focus in exactly on that. Absolutely, 100%. And it's what's interesting, Vitaly, is more people are going to Amazon to find brands than they ever have before. They're actually looking, they're trying to discover new brands they can fall in love with and depend on. People who are into mountain, mountain biking or mountain climbing, they're like, well, I always buy stuff from a mountain bike. Who can I trust? Who can I always go to? And I, I don't have to wonder, is it good or not? Once they find a brand, they like to stick to it. We live in the day where it is easier to build a brand faster than it ever was before. If you were to move back to the 1960s or the 1980s, it was so much harder and you had to spend millions to get people to notice. Today, you can do this through Facebook ads, through Google ads, through, int- through Pinterest, through Instagram, through TikTok. Like there's so many ways to get exposure. It's absolutely amazing. Exactly. And you know, uh, what we just mentioned in the case of working with a big brands inside the Amazon, because we work less uh, like the accelerator for the most of the Amazon sellers with the help of the PPC tools. We yeah. absolutely sure that if you think that your product is good and you have an idea as how to reach a bestseller or to be a bestseller, it doesn't matter how big the brand will be here. It doesn't if, if like the Nike will reach this niche or platform or something like that. You have your amount of reviews, you have your amount of uh, organic and PPC orders and we know like ha- how to control it yeah how to grab more additional traffic inside the Amazon how to like work with it so here's like the point that the Amazon is like one of the I guess amazing platforms in the case of like the e-commerce yeah. because you could have a chance to see your CPA like like here if you will spend a $100 you will see how you could sell yeah like how, how much you could get from from like this uh, amount that you will spend and here's like the main idea when you do it uh you shouldn't be focused on like ad spend as for us it's it's like tricky you know we really don't mm-hmm. like it we think that it should be like the ad investments for you because mm-hmm. every time yeah. when you do the spend on the amazon you every time working in a case of the relevancy in a case of building your brand and absolutely agree with you in a case of all this trip that you like all the journey that you will do in a case of like launching the products and it helps you just to build the fundament, uh, like fundamentals on the understanding how you should promote your product exactly and correctly to the right audience. Exactly. I like how you said it's ad investment, not ad spend. If I knew that for every $5 I spent, I could get a $100 sale, I would be happy to get $95 because I spent five to get the sale. In fact, why don't I spend $50? and get 500 in sales. See what I mean? There's no reason. If you understand the math, then you see it is an investment. It's the cost of getting the sale. Exactly. And once I understand that, then it's just, it's a matter of math. Of course I'm going to, because it's going to make me more money and then my business will grow. Exactly. And you know, uh, we also got a point when we start working with the big brands, uh, we just understand that they spend a lot on the Amazon, but they do not track nothing. They do not have any analytics in the case of the organic results, the PPC, like right. they do not collect it. And they tell us, right. hey, no worries about it. We just spend for our brand awareness. And we say, no, 
<laughs> you know, we, we just yep. go inside, we double check yep. all your metrics, and no, you do not spend on your brand awareness. If we will build these, these, these unique campaigns that we have inside the profit fails, that is like absolutely will uh, include all needed materials for you, for your product, include all your like competitors that just grab your sales and we will have a defense and attack strategies. Yes, it will be so. So exactly. let's just remake it, you know? So every yeah. time when you do it, you should absolutely be sure that you do it correctly in the case of like the data, in the case of the all uh, like campaigns and uh, yeah, keywords that you have inside. So yeah. Right, exactly. Got it. Thies, thank you so much for all these explanations. Thank you You're for welcome. all these like step-by-step -step actions. And I really, uh, I'm really glad that you just joined us today. In the case of like this, this podcast, uh, I guess I have like one, the last question, it will be a funny, but still, uh, could you please tell me what is the best way to reach just one diamond? Uh, how the best way to contact you? Sure. Absolutely. If you go to just one dime, dot com and just one one is spelled out o n e dime just like the coin the 10 cents coin dime.com from there you can find our instagram our youtube our free training everything we do a 90 minute free training workshop for anyone who really wants to understand this at a deeper level just one dime.com thank you so much these uh, absolutely glad that you joined us today so i'm really glad if you will have a chance to join us one more time Thank you so much for having me, Vitelli. Very nice to meet you and thank you for what you guys do. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much too. Bye-bye. And that is all for today's Dr. Amazon episode. Don't miss our future arrivals with new hot topics. Press the like, leave us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. We will come back to you shortly.